I tried to say it co rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the story behind is that uh, uh, when Andre mentioned the theorem earlier to me, uh, I, I understood Erdos co radi. <laughs> there is nothing like that. Probably yeah, probably there is. There is. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> first of all, I, I would like to thank for the <laughs> organizers <laughs> for inviting me here. <laughs> so, uh, that, that, that's very strange. We always have to start from the very beginning to, to, to make clear for everybody. It's unlike in algebraic geometry. That we see. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you start from the very beginning, you will never end it. <laughs> so, he started again because then he just came. I see. And he doesn't know what is his notation. <laughs> so we, we say this is a family of subsets of the n element set. And uh, we call a family intersecting if uh, the, the, the whole the pairs are non disjoint So we have such uh, uh, subsets of the n element set, and this is forbidden. So this is intersecting. And uh, <coughs> we celebrated the theorem of Erdős Corrado is uh, that uh, if we have sets uh, of size less than half, then, so, so and, and uh, fixed size, k, which is less than half, then um, the largest uh, family is this one that we fix some point and we take all k element subsets containing uh, uh, this point. <laughs> And uh, this is one of the authors of the of the theorem. Paul and the visiting us after after dinner. He wanted to the, the picture is not very clear. So this is a phone in his hands. Uh, in his he sent his traditional uh, uh, landline phone, and so he wanted to make a phone call. I started to think about the number, and uh, during these minutes he fell asleep. <laughs> <coughs> so two part uh, families, when uh, the underlying set is uh, divided into two parts, n1 here, n2 here. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we consider subsets which have fixed size here and fixed size here. So, so we take the union of uh, so we, the, the whole set has uh, the, the family consists of L plus S element subset. <coughs> I will denote, uh, use this very strange and complicated notation. So R from M x1 and s from x2 and you take the minutes. <coughs> or another okay so the problem is that uh, determine the largest intersecting subfamily of of, uh, of this uh, family the so largest uh, family the position of such uh, sex <coughs> and uh, so a uh, natural construction is that fits one point here, this red thing, and we take all R element sets containing here, and all S element sets here. So for every R element set containing this red point, we take, we match all S element sets uh, on, on, on the right hand side. And uh, so this gives uh, from the Erdős Corrado construction, the trivial construction, we, we get, get uh, this many sets here, and for every one we have n to choose s in the other side. And of course we can do this in the uh, fixing the points in this side, and then we obtain uh, this formula. And uh, 
Now, Frank, uh, uh, what, 20 years ago, proved uh, uh, if, if R is less than N one half and S is less than N two half, then the larger subfamily is the, the larger of these two uh, constructions. Actually, there's a, a little story that uh, uh, I kind of rediscovered it last year, uh, the theorem, which is a little strange because he's a very good friend of mine, but he, he's writing so many papers I cannot follow all of them. And, uh, and then uh, when I lectured it in Israel, Noga uh, Alon, uh, suggested the uh, eigenvalue algebraic tensor product proof, uh, very, very elegant, very nice proof, and uh, we wrote up the paper and it turned out that uh, the same proof as uh, Peter Frank's uh, 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 paper. <coughs> and, uh, so, what is very important in, in this uh, proof is that uh, <coughs> it, uh, it uses uh, the direct product property. So here when uh, you take uh, SLM, R, RMN sets here, SLMN, you, you have to take all possible pairs. And uh, so, uh, I, I, I tell this because um, wh why uh, this proof doesn't work, I, I will explain later. <laughs> why this proof method doesn't work for the question I will ask uh, in a minute. So first, uh, just a definition that uh, we, we call uh, this trivial intersecting uh, things a substar. So when we fix one point, and take all uh, members of the family. So from one given family, fix uh, one work, one point, and take all members containing this point to the substar of F. So uh, Frank's theorem can be formulated in this way: that if you take uh, <laughs> this family, then the largest uh, uh, sub intersecting subfamily is a substar for for some some x. <coughs> uh, I I am just uh, repeating the theorem here. Uh, I mean the main main part uh, to uh, to be able to see when uh, the uh, formulas <coughs> when I want to compare these two two numbers. So when is this bigger? easy to see that uh, this is equal to this one and, and uh, this is equal to this one so when you compare uh, two sides it depends only on, on this ratio so if uh, r over s is greater than equal to n1 over n2 then this is uh, the bigger one otherwise this is the bigger one mm -hmm. so you seem so more natural to consider other ratios. R divided on the N1 and S1 because it's in just density of these sets inside of N. But, but, you, but you don't know why, how I want to use it. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> so, uh, now I, I am asking the following question that we, we have uh, such two, two different kinds of uh, sets R here, S here and the union and T here, U here and the union and uh, so if we want to uh, consider this case this is not a direct product because the direct product would contain also T here and S here and we, we don't allow this 
So this is why the direct product algebraic methods don't work for, for this case. Okay, but uh, so so this is the the family in a stupid formal way. <coughs> so uh, if we take only the R element ones and the S element uh, sets, then we know that uh, uh, this so only only the blue ones. Then the first part we if if this holds. So if both ratios are bigger than n1 over n2, then the first part wins and we are done. So in this case there is nothing new. But uh, the problem is when uh, one of the ratios is bigger than n1 over n2, the other one is uh, uh, less than, I'm uh, sorry, so yeah, less than uh, this ratio. And uh, so then it's, it's one would so that then for this problem we should choose uh, a, a point here and the it for for the other one uh, we should choose the other point and and uh, so one might have doubts that it works because uh, there, there are some contradicting uh, results but uh, still one of them did. So this is the theorem shortly, and uh, in uh, the formal way, if we, yeah, so it's a sub-star again, the largest intersecting family in this one. But uh, I will consider a more general uh, problem when we have uh, all kinds of uh, pairs, so R1, S1, R2, S2, Two and R three S three, so up up to K, and uh, this is still still correct. So so this is the main, not the main theorem, but this is the only theorem in my talk. That uh, if you take uh, uh, this family, then the largest intersecting family is a substar. So we have to fix one point and take all such uh, sets containing the, this uh, point. <coughs> I uh, try to give a, a little hints about the proof. <coughs> so, reminder that uh, in the traditional Erdős Corrado theorem there is a cycle proof which means that you consider a cyclic ordering uh, of the elements and you solve an analogous problem, namely you take intervals along the, along the cycle and solve the same problem, what is the maximum number of uh, <laughs> intervals um, that uh, they meet, uh, not, not disjointly. And, uh, so, so uh, the, the proof will follow basically this idea, but uh, instead of a, a cyclic permutation, we need to consider a product of two cyclic permutations. Because for both, two, two permutations for both parts, and you, we have to take uh, all the, the pairs. And I, for, for the lecture, maybe it's not so, important to use a notation, but in the paper uh, I use this notation that so, so this, this stands for one of the cycles and this stands for the other cycle. And uh, so what about the intervals? In, instead of, of the intervals, we have to take uh, direct products of the intervals, one from here and one from here, of lengths R, I and S, I. And <coughs> and uh, what is this? This is a rectangle, uh, side product of two intervals. <laughs> and uh, the condition is that uh, two rectangles are intersecting in at least one direction. So uh, 
in, in uh, I will show pictures and I will call it project intersecting. Uh, so, so this is this is the direct product. Of course, I uh, it would be very difficult to show the the thickened nature of. So imagine that this is the same thing as this one and this is the same thing as this one. And uh, this is a this is a, a rectangle in this uh, structure, and uh, we have an other rectangle, <coughs> and they have to intersect either in this way or in this way. So this is wrong when they are disjoint in, in both directions. So one of the projections is intersecting. This is the condition. And uh, so I now we have families of rectangles uh, for each size, combination of sizes. So R I, script I, script R I is the family of rectangles of uh, these sizes. And uh, the union contains all, all the rectangles, and these should be project intersecting, which means that every, no matter what size, <laughs> every two uh, rectangle has to be pro project intersecting, so in one direction they have to be, a, have to have a, a non-empty non uh, intersection. So, uh, now we should prove an analogous statement to the the theorem that the best is when we fix one uh, point in one of the cycles. So this this is a red uh, line, and so the the hope is, and actually, so we can prove that uh, this is the best <laughs> if we take all rectangles which meet this this line, one of the lines. Maybe this way, but so in, in one of the two directions. And uh, so what is the number, what we obtain in this way? Uh, so uh, this one is the uh, horizontal version, so N1. Oh, sorry, this so N1 means uh, this is uh, Z N1. So so the size uh, along this line is N1, and so we have every rectangle, every kinds of rectangles. Uh, so so for instance, this one is N time N1 times happens because we can start it here, 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 every, every point, and, and then we also can push this down, so this could be here, here, yeah, only three. And uh, so this is how we obtain uh, this uh, uh, number, so here the, 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 the vertical size Counts, right? So this is the horizontal, and this is the vertical. What what comes? So n times one for every kinds of rectangle this size we have to add up. So so this is the result what we obtain if uh, the red line is uh, uh, horizontal. If ver vertical, then the other uh, way around. So, so, so this, this, this can be really proved, uh, this inequality, if uh, uh, everything, if the number of, of N1 and N2 are large enough, then uh, this is true that this is the best choice. Because, uh, so you can feel that uh, if, if you take, oh, I don't know which picture to look at, so if, if the intersections are somewhere in the middle, that, that's, it's finite. I mean, you cannot have too many 
uh, uh, rectangles when it's not along one one line, but it's tedious to many. There are many cases and um, uh, details. But it, but the funny thing is that this is not enough. So this is the analogous statement for the for the double cycle, and we, we could prove. But it, this is not not good enough. You you don't with the double uh, counting, uh, you don't get the, the theorem. What we really need is uh, a weighted uh, version of it. So you take, uh, so if you read, these are, uh, so this is the bound here. So B is the maximum, actually, of, of the, uh, of the sizes of the uh, sets and 9b squared is uh, uh, and uh, then we, we choose uh, real numbers in an arbitrary way and uh, we take a uh, weighted, weighted version of them and then the, this inequality holds with the weighted uh, uh, sum of the Rectangles. And so this is an additional complication to, to prove the, the statement. Instead of this, we have to prove this one. But if we are done with this, then so this, this is the difficult part. The rest is uh, uh, calculation. Uh, so we define the, the families. Um, in an obvious way, so Fi is the family where the, the sizes are R, I, and Si, and then we uh, take this double calculation where here we have the pair of uh, uh, cyclic permutations, uh, this is a, a, a member of the family, and the weight depends on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on the type of rectangle, so where we are. So it depends, the weight depends on this. And so this is the weight. And uh, so calculating this in two different ways and using the lemma, you, you really obtain what uh, the theorem. So. <coughs> Family is trivially intersecting. I, I am introducing new and new names for the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, trivially intersecting if the uh, intersection of all of them is non empty, so it's a star, so it looks like this. And uh, so I think Erdos asked uh, uh, what happens if you forbid. Uh, in the Erdos Corrado theorem, we forbid the, the star, so there is no point which contains all of the sets. And uh, uh, Hilton and Milner uh, proved that uh, this, is, this becomes the bound, which means that uh, you take one point and one set which doesn't contain this point and take all sets which contain this red point and meet this given set. And the importance, the significance of the theorem is that this is uh, dramatically smaller. So the, the bound is the original, Erdos Corrado, it, it is uh, the order of magnitude of this is n to the k minus first power, but uh, the order of magnitude of this is n to the, the k minus second power. So it's uh, really uh, big, there's a big jump here. And uh, so I, I pose uh, this uh, open problem that uh, 
So <laughs> what happens in, in our main question, mm -hmm. if we suppose that it's, it's not trivial, so that the, we remember that the result was that it's always a substar, a, a substar and so we forbid this, then what happens? And uh, so the suggestion is that you take uh, Hilton Milner on the left hand side, this many sets, and you match every set with, with a set here, and so you get this product. And, uh, and the other way you can also say the Hilton Milner here and uh, R element sets here, then, then you get uh, this product. But uh, uh, this, this is wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I missed or uh, oversaw mm -hmm. the following construction mm -hmm. that you can good fix one point here and take a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a pair of sets, R element, S element sets here and take all the sets containing uh, this uh, point and meeting uh, this one, either here or here. So it's more general construction and uh, it, it gives a uh, bigger value for, for uh, depending on the parameters. And uh, so one Sudakov Yer Yeira, I don't know how to pronounce, probably Spanish name. They, they determined uh, just just a couple of weeks ago. They, it's, it's, it can be found on the archive already. It's, it, it's a pretty difficult uh, theorem. Of course, uh, the the cycle method doesn't work for this. So you you need the shift shifting technique, mm -hmm. and uh, also for for the multi uh, part case, uh, and and I also <laughs> strongly believe that uh, the, the theorem what I stated here is also true for uh, the multi hard case, but uh, this lemma is becoming so uh, tedious so to, to follow what happens in, in more dimensions that uh, I was uh, a little to. So, so I, I will uh, probably start with a student to, again to, to attack this because it's uh, need so many pages. <coughs> oh, the subject is wrong with the computer. <laughs> so, uh, at, the, at the end, I would like to uh, uh, say uh, thanks to Andre for first of the initiative. So, it, it's a great initiative. We, we, we met at conferences, uh, Hungarian and Russian uh, mathematicians working in uh, uh, combinatorics, we met regularly, but there was no such an event when uh, we emphasized our collaborations as an initiative and for the perfect organization. And uh, uh, one more thing that we, o we have already decided the next year, the next uh, conference, which will be June 27th, 28th, and 29th, preceding the LOAS conference, which uh, so, so it will be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday will be sightseeing, and uh, on Monday we we'll start to celebrate LOAS. Yes, thank you very much. It's uh, important to emphasize that uh, the next event will be in Budapest. Oh, yeah, sure. We didn't <laughs> say it, but <laughs> it's important. Uh, okay, now any questions or comments for this lecture? I have one remark. 
that most of the Russians who would come to Budapest are not yet here. <laughs> yes. But Andre will tell them. <laughs> I, I just wanted to emphasize that. <laughs> Any more comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much once again.